Hi, uh, my name is Pratik and I'm from Kokachi. It's a very small indie publishing house that my wife Tina and I started together. The reason she isn't here giving this talk is because we have four dogs and only one of us can travel at a time as of now. So she goes for one event and then I come for the next and she's not as familiar with Delhi as I am. So I figured I'll come this time, but she clearly is um, the driving force behind Kokachi. Though we started the company together, we've, she's now, I mean, taken on, I mean, most of the publishing side of things and uh, all of that. So, but, um, I mean, most of the Indian cr creators here know part of our story. Um, but for those of you who don't, um, before we started, sorry, um, before we started, so we've been making comics about six years now, but it's been uh, divided into two parts. So the first three years were as a company called Mantare, which a friend Dilip and I started together. Dilip and I started this company in 2010, mid of 2010, as um, we started together. And Hush was the first book that we brought out. And um, so that's Dilip and Prabha, who's, uh, who was our director, and um, Tina and myself. And um, Hush was a book, uh, I think at that time, the Indian comic scene wasn't uh, what it is today. I think um, Apupan's Moonward had come out. Amrita's Curry was a book that we'd seen and we really loved it from then. And they were two creators who had you know, come out from the mainstream publishing side, but there was no indie comics side. And uh, we brought out Hush, which was a 36 page book, which dealt with um, child sexual abuse. It was completely silent. And um, I mean, fortunately, for some reason, there was a lot of press and um, mainstream attention came to the book. I think we, we kind of put a lot of attention in the production quality of the book. Being an indie publisher, I think that's something that we've always focused on, that we try and make our books really, really objects that you can um, want to buy or keep for yourself. Um, the book was illustrated by Raji Vipe, who has also designed the decaf logo. So we did the book entirely in silence in black and white. And um, what happened after the publication of the book is that um, there was a lot of interest in basically commercial projects in terms of um, to commission, us, commission comics from us. And at that point, we were running uh, on like small angel funding from friends and our own money. So we were, it was actually a good boon for us to basically take up these commercial projects because that helped I mean, you know, help sustain us. And Dilip used to be working in an ad agency in Dubai. And I was in um, Bangalore doing comics full time. Tina was working at Wipro at the time. And um, Prabha was freelancing as an artist. So, um, an illustrator. So we, one of the first comics we did was with the ma magazine that is um, not there in publication now so much called Ma Motherland. We did a story on um, Charles Sobraj. And, um, then Forbes Life basically commissioned us to do more comics. And we used to do these eight page comics in their um, quarterly issues. Uh, so this is with Prabha, Malia. This is with, um, I think, Oindri and uh, Tina and Archana Srinivasan. And, and then one of the bigger projects and what became a huge turning point for us, at least commercially and financially to make it sustainable was uh, a commission or a collaboration with Mint, which is a Delhi-based and India's second largest business paper. So we were building, we were making weekly comics for them, full page comics for them. And we did it for three con continuous years. So about 150 comics collaborating with about, I think, 60 to 70 art creators, primarily from India and a few of them from the US. And 
this basically kept us going because I mean the startup money whatever we had would run out run out soon. But also the flip side of doing commercial uh, work or commission work is that we didn't make any more comics for a long time. But we did get to do some interesting pieces on on political killings in Kerala on Kapil Sibal and also but we had free reign almost because Sukuma who runs Mint is a huge fan of comics so we did philosophical stuff and that's on Dhyan Chand. But we realized we were not making comics and um, we weren't really sure so Hush didn't do great numbers in terms of print and and we priced it also I think we didn't know how to price books because I remember I'd come to Delhi um, around that time and was invited to one of the I don't know, publishing parties here. And I was an odd man out. I mean, what do we know about publishing, right? So I showed Hush, I think, to one of the bigger publishers here. And I think she asked, so the book is priced at 195 and we'd spend 80 bucks printing it. So there's practically no profit from the book. And like the suggestion was to basically, you have to price it four times or something, but we couldn't even imagine pricing books like that because I wouldn't go and buy Hush for 500 bucks. I mean, that's the logic that we had because I mean, it's a beautiful book probably, but who's going to spend so much money on comics, right? So we tried out digital route. So we basically, Tina, uh, my friend Praveen and I, we wrote three of the stories in this collection called Mixtape. And um, we had friends collaborate and contribute to this four part, four comic anthology. And they were all short comics because all of our friends were working freelance and you know, they didn't have time. So you wanted to do short comics which people could make on the weekends. So just two pages or four pages and... That's pretty good. Sorry. <laughs> so we did this as a digital experiment. We put it out for 55 bucks on the net and we said, people, it's just the price of a coffee. You know, you can probably download it. And we got a couple of hundred downloads. And um, then we thought, okay, let's do print. And we found this printer in Bangalore. We did digital prints of about 100 copies and what we've done from the beginning actually is, because there's no market for indie comics or the comics that we were making here. I mean, there was a lot of mythology comics happening at that time, but the kind of stuff we were doing, nobody was interested in, I thought. So we thought, let's just try and do a event. So we printed these on these brown paper books and we had a event in a coffee shop in Bangalore. And surprisingly, we got sold out at that event. So it was really surprising to see that we actually had you know, we just brought out one comic before this, but people actually knew us, and we immediately followed up with Mixtape Volume 2. And um, again, friends and people we knew collaborated and contributed, and this was a slightly larger book. And um, we did an event in Cochin for the first time. I mean, that's where, you know, my parents don't, I mean, now they do, but at that time, they didn't even know what I was doing in comics. I mean, like, who goes to engineering and then post-graduation in design and then go do comics, I mean. So for them it was a huge revelation, oh, there is, because I think about 100 people turned up there also and they're like, oh, okay, so, you know, maybe my son is in a right track or whatever. So this is, too, this is like late 2013. But what has happened at that point is that um, we had to shut down Manta Ray, um, primarily because, so Dilip and I, so he, he was in Dubai and I was here and as co-founders, I think we had quite different visions for the company and I think also you know it's not easy I think to communicate when you're in two countries and I think Prabha had left for the US so we were like practically on you know different continents by that time so basically it was completely dark at that point um, which is why <laughs> but see I think I'm very lucky to be standing here I don't I, I mean so like Apupan and Amrita I, I don't know I, I, yeah I mean she's I mean her books really, I mean, everybody knows it abroad also. Apubin's also, I think he does a lot of commercial work. So we, I mean, to do indie comics in India, I think is not easy at all. I mean, but we were, I mean, fantastically lucky because um, what happened was that the comics basically got into the hands of film directors who started commissioning us for animation stuff. So I'm just showing one of, this is the first film that we worked on. Uh,
So we started getting commission projects for animation film and we I didn't I mean I my friends are in animation but I didn't know anything about animation but then we basically figured out okay we have to understand you know how to conceptualize for animation so we started working with studios writing scripts and making animation for feature films and that's what's been I think keeping us running for the past 3 years of starting Kokachi so this film by um this is a Malayalam film called Gangster and so this came about because the second mixtape from Mandari was launched in the cafe run by the director and um and so then we started Tina and I started Kokachi and for those of you who don't know what Kokachi is um basically when um in Kerala in when small children don't eat the food let in your 3 years or 4 years old we don't eat your food your parents or your grandparents tell you that the Kokachi will come and catch you if you don't eat your food so it's a childhood monster and um i mean it is very difficult to find a name that we like as much as you know manta ray and for a long time we were very concerned if it's too negative because it's an evil character in some sense but and but every other name we searched on google was already taken up and we searched for kokachi and google didn't know what kokachi was <laughs> right and uh, so we figured okay so and the name itself is i mean some friends start telling us oh it sounds like a japanese gaming company and other said at least it comes from your roots i mean it comes from where we are it's probably i think the first story that tina and i must have heard as i've heard as children and since nobody knows what a kokachi is i mean we could imagine as many kokachis as we want like apoopens drawn his version of kokachi for us and you know like so that was a huge i mean i don't know it just came lucky i don't know how we got the name but yeah and one of the first things we did after coming starting kokachi was to basically bring out this um thing called matchbox comics which is matchbox size comic books so we have these uh, that and by the time because we did hush and two mixtapes and stories were quite dark people were thinking of us as a company that tells only dark stories so we wanted to break that and this is a way in which the stories are meant for 8 year olds to 80 year olds and what we also were seeing is that people like if you go to comic con in india um you'll have a 200 rupee comic there and you'll have a maybe a 300 rupee mug there but people buy the book and not the comic so people were somehow not interested in books and we figured okay some maybe people don't read comics or they're not you know they find comics as a intimidating medium but the moment we start doing this they found it cute it's like a merchandise item and they start picking up and then they saw it's a story inside it and then it actually snowballed from there so we got a lot of good response for the matchbox comics and we did different stories with different creators inside that and um so prabha after we split from mandare had taken a years hiatus because i think for her it was difficult to basically make the transition immediately and then so that's when we went and did the matchbox comics and she came back and um till that date basically we were working out of so when i was when we started mandare i was uh, not married and um half of the bedroom was basically the office then Tina came so basically that became smaller just quarter of the space then we when we moved home when we moved to Cochin we had a single room and then we finally had the courage to take up a studio space and we started for the first time we opened the studio with a 24 hour comic day which is basically you make 24 pages of comics in 24 hours and we had about 10 creators come from um, Bangalore and Chennai and Cochin and um so from 12 o'clock in the afternoon till the next 12 o'clock next morning next afternoon 12 o'clock they just sat and made comics and we actually one of them is one of the books actually being published right now from that meet up and again uh, we tried doing sketch up meets in cochin because we didn't have a community there at all i mean people don't read a lot of comics though we had i mean strong comics culture so we started doing sketch up meets but again these commercial projects because we're doing animation films in between and because we had to i don't know pay the bills but we still were making comics and um uh, that kept gnawing at us and we finally decided after we basically for two years i think we kept working on this third volume mixtape and um and this was like a 108 page book because we've already usually done these 24 page or 48 page books and this was a huge leap for us and we ran this um and i think kickstarter also was big at that time so we did this small pre order thing where we gave the book and also Tina's and we made a comic for our wedding because we both met on a train so we had this story thing so for people and this was a collection of love stories so we did this thing where people who pre-order the book would get our love story also with it and that basically you know i know we got a, a decent number of pre-orders from it and again we went back to the format of 
you launch a book with an event. So we did this event in Bangalore where friends came because I think what has happened with us is that people come, at least they know us, and when we do an event, it's a chance to come and meet the creators behind it. And that's something that we've been focusing on all the time. Like yesterday in Delhi, we did an event with two of our creators because it's a place for building community, more than the social and the online thing, I think. I think I'm much more a real-world person than the online. I mean, we're not very great on social media. We just post stuff, but we enjoy this a lot more because it's a lot more interactive. And people also started sending us work. I mean, all this time we had to commission or we would write our own stories and ask people, our friends, to draw. But we got this. And for the first time, we were doing a picture book. And we had no clue what the picture book market. I think for us, always what's been driving us is that if we love something, we just publish it. So this is a book by a Delhi-based creator called Upasana. Her name is Upasana Mahendrata. And um, she did this story about uh, we call a blue kokaji, who basically comes and scares this guy. And um, it's a slightly tricky book because it's children. Parents think it's too sophisticated for children, and adults think it's a children's book, so I can't buy it. But people who I've seen people in stores, like I'll be standing in a store and they'll pick up the book and they love it, and then but it's a children's book, oh, I'll keep it back, you know. And but I mean, but there are certain stores in India where they cater to children, and I think parents love it a lot. So. But we're pushing, I think, I mean, from darker stories, you're trying to push into new formats and trying to do, I don't know, slightly different things, at least challenging ourselves as editors or publishers, because this is not something that we would have done probably, you know, two years back. And um, this is a book that we released earlier this year called 405, which is meant to be a short film, but the people who, the, our friends who wanted to make the short film didn't have the budget for it. So we asked them if you could make a comic out of it. And Vishnu, who's a daily based illustrator, illustrated this book. And it's, again, a lot of our stories are silent for some reason. So I've not cracked that. I mean, most of our stories are silent. And um, as writers, it's not very flattering. Because I remember when I did Hush, and um, somebody asked, so there's, I mean, there's obviously a writer credit saying writer, Pratik Thomas. So somebody's asking me, why is there a writer? I mean, like, there's no words in the book. And right? <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah, so, I mean, we, but we, I know, I mean, I don't know if you need words all the time, so. So this is the book that actually we did two years ago at the 24-hour comic day. Fahad, who has drawn all the illustrations here, he, he came to our studio and he just sat and drew this book. He did half of it at the studio and then he went home and did it. It's about this fly um, who basically comes and pesters a man and then it takes on a completely different trip. And um, I mean, so in the past one year, I mean, we've actually been the most productive in all six years. We brought out some four books, and in a couple of weeks' time, we're releasing the next Matchbox volume, uh, to which a lot of, I mean, creators we love have contributed this time. Is there more time? Than yeah, OK. Sorry, I, I thought this was going to end the presentation, but I mean, I started out, so exactly 30 years ago, I was a six-year-old who <laughs> dressed up as Superman. Um, and like, I mean, I think like most comic fans, we come into superhero comics. The f irony is that I never liked Superman. You know, this is comic lying around at home and I just dressed up like that. And But I've never liked Superman, unfortunately. I mean, I'm a Batman guy, but. <laughs> so I, I was going to end here because I thought I'll run out of time. But I'm, okay, so what comes next is what we're doing. The new comics are releasing next year. This is a book called The Clearing by Madhav Nair, who goes by the um, handle Dead the Duck on Instagram. and So he's again in a completely different space. He came and interned in us, at our studio, and we specifically called him because I knew he would push us in a new, new direction. It's not a direction. He makes these very dark and sometimes very surreal comics, and I knew that he'd push us in a different direction completely. So we said, come, and it's... So he did this over 30 days in the internship. He made this comic, and we bring hoping to bring it out next month or in February. And uh, this is by this artist called Joshi Bendik. Um, he's a, a Kerala-based artist, and um, it's actually in Malayalam. And he just sent us this English translation, and he said he'd like to see and explore if we could bring it out. So we we really liked his art and the colors, and and it's a story set in Kerala. I would would know regular people, so 
I mean, we're really looking forward to bringing this out also. A lot of translation has to be reworked on, but um, because to get the nuance of Malayalam to English and still keep the local flavor and the simplicity of language is tough. So that's something we're working on now. And this is a book that um, Prabha is illustrating with us. And this is, um, it's a story of this character Ashokan and his dog, but it's set against the political violence in North Kerala. That's, I mean, it's been in the news a while and yeah, so, yeah, so that's it, yeah, <laughs> thanks, yeah, yeah, cool, yeah, thank you. <laughs>